morning, my name is Gordon, and in this video we'll go over a detailed uh, review and explanation of my design of the 1912 Blackburn Type D monoplane. Uh, this is a three-channel uh, plane, semi-scale, built from plans available on the website. Uh, very easy to build and makes for a great first-time uh, plans build project for a semi-scale flyer. A key aspect of design the Blackbird is a plywood uh, plate that where all the structural components are mounted on. You can see the plywood plate here for the servos. It extends back here and the plate is a continuous one all the way to where the engine is mounted. On this plywood plate are located the servos, the battery tray, the landing gear, as well as the engine itself. They're all mounted on this tray, very strong uh, to include the wing mounts, and the aircraft structure is essentially built around this plywood uh, tray. It's a very effective way to build strength into these antique flyers that don't have a lot of uh, inherent fuselage and structural strength for the aircraft. And very easy to do for an RC model. The Blackburn has been restored. It flies regularly as part of the Shuttleworth collection in the United Kingdom. Because of this, there are numerous pictures on the internet that will help you detail your version of the Blackburn uh, build. CAD plans for the Blackburn are available on the website. The plans have all the information you need to build this aircraft uh, to include wood sizes and how to build the landing gear. The side view of the fuselage shows that it's relatively simple construction. Uh, it can be done by somebody who has built at least one plane by the plans. This view of the fuselage shows the landing gear being attached to the plywood plate. Formers on top of that to build the cowl. Cowling is uh, typically built around the motor to make sure everything fits into place. This picture shows the tail of the battery hatch uh, being uh, fitted and behind that the metal tube for the dowel of the uh, wing to insert. This is a finished nose section of the Blackburn with iron-on metallic covering simulating the metal covering. Taking a look at the aircraft, uh, this is where the battery goes. The battery hatch friction fits into place, uh, electronics in the cockpit, the servos for the rudder and elevator. I elected like to cover the top surface of the wing only my Blackburn to save a little bit of weight. Others have covered the bottom surface as well. You can see the triangulated fuselage, the landing gear with wood glued onto the music wire, electric motor in place. Continuing to the rear of the aircraft, the generous surface areas of the tails for uh, smooth and stable flight. A nice large rudder to help with turns. The model has three channels, no ailerons like the full-scale Blackburn. And finishing up with a uh, head-on view of the aircraft. One of the fun things about building uh, or designing aircraft is seeing how other people build uh, their models from your plans. Steve Moskill did a great job on his Blackburn build. You can see pictures here. The uh, landing gear in place, uh, spoke wheel, silver solder. Top view of Steve's Blackburn with the tail uh, section covered. Uh, Steve strengthened up the wing for outdoor flight. And this is a head-on view of Steve's uh, Blackburn with the rigging wires uh, being assembled. Werner over in Germany took the plans for the Blackburn and enlarged them 125%. Uh, the model looks very nice with his pilot figure installed. Uh, this is the detail of the front view of Werner's Blackburn. A very nice job simulating the landing gear with the spoke wheels as well as the rotary engine. The wings of the Blackburn have balls of dowels that are inserted in the metal tubes for the proper dihedral and incidence. The Blackburn has plenty of power, it takes off at just a few feet, a very gentle responsive flyer, it can be flown outside under calm wind conditions, inside and larger flying venues, and overall just a very pleasant aircraft to fly. Huh? Is there a cord light is on? Yeah. Next way is plus zero, by 